Magmasmite is one of my favorite Pokemon that returned in the Teal Mask DLC. At base 130 attack and solid 110 HP, and super interesting ice and ground typing, the swine can be a real threat. It can run the ability Oblivious which stops it from being intimidated by the opponent, or even Thick Fat which reduces ice and fire damage by 50%. It has amazing offensive capabilities with dual stab on Earthquake and Icicle Crash, and coverage with knockoff. It's got nice stab priority with Ice Shard, and it was also buffed by now getting access to the move Trailblaze, which is a 50 base power grass move that gives you a plus one speed boost and allows you to outspeed a lot of Pokemon. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a super fun game here for you. As always, if you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second. I promise you will not regret it. And before we get into the video, I wanna give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. I work in my home office so much that I've been looking into standing desk for a while now, and when FlexiSpot agreed to work with me, is an absolute game changer. You can customize the size and the color of the desk that you're looking for, and when I got mine, honestly, it makes it by far the nicest desk I've ever had. It has a keypad with a nice little USB slot and super easy buttons to set it to any height that you want. The dual motor system makes it so it doesn't shake no matter the height and the sturdiness of it honestly just feels really nice. I decided to go with the bamboo top which is super durable and environmentally friendly and it just fits the vibe that I was looking for. I really enjoy this thing because it's simple, it does exactly what I need it to do, and it looks nice while doing it. When I'm editing videos or streaming, I like to switch from sitting to standing every hour or so, it gets the old blood flowing, and it actually does help my back so much. And Zuki also greatly approves. Honestly, I just can't recommend this enough if you spend any time sitting at a desk. They have an option for literally whatever you might need, and the prices really can't be beat for the quality that they offer. Go ahead and click that link in the description of the video to check out all the options, and I promise you won't regret it. Now let's go ahead and get back into the battle. Alright, so to start things off, my opponent is going to lead off with the Quillfish. I gotta admit, I do respect it. I decided to toss out the absolute OG face paint, and we're out here ready to deliver some prehistoric hands. I have a pretty good matchup here with the Mammoth Swine. Right from the start though, I'm going to go for the Stealth Rock. I want to ensure that I can break some potential Focus Sashes. Plus, I don't really know what the Quillfish wants to do here from the start. I'm expecting a pivot with something like a Flip Turn. I do get up those Stealth Rocks, that's going to be nice for the late game. And they do actually end up going for the Rain Dance. Now, we didn't see this thing come in and go for the Intimidate ability. So, it probably tells me this thing is going to be Swift Swim. I, however, am holding the Focus Sash. So, even though they are now faster, I'm able to take a Waterfall with 1 HP. And you can never count out the Mammo. Look at the size of those tusks. You want to be waterfalling those bad boys? I then fire off an Earthquake, and that's going to end up taking care of the Quillfish. So, we got a Pufferfish down over on aisle 4. We got to get a cleanup crew out here. We take care of the lead, and now they get a free switch into whatever they like. So, they decide to go into the Tinkaton. Now, the only reason why you go into Tinkaton here is if they're either going to go for a Terra Flying to avoid the Earthquake, or they have like a Fake Out or something like that. So, I'm going to end up playing it safe. I can actually conserve Mamoswine here. Being at 1 HP isn't the end of the world as long as they don't have the uh, any hazards up. So I bring in the log because this kind of covers for a couple different types of Tinkaton. If it's going to go for a Stealth Rock here, I can actually rapid spin those away. I can yawn this thing and overall just have a good little koala time. So they actually end up going for the Fake Out. So it was going to try to get some priority and knock down my last HP on the Mamoswine. But of course, not going to hurt too bad on the koala here. And at this point, I figure... They probably switch out, so I'm just going to end up going for the knockoff. I'm thinking their best answer to this is probably going to be something like the Sinistra that they have in the back. But they actually just stay in, swing the old hammer, tell me to knock it off. Gets rid of my leftovers, but I also am like, hey, no, you knock it off. I get rid of your life orb, and now look at us. Both item lists and just having a weird time. So, at this point, I figured they probably just stay in and try to, to knock me out. I'm just going to end up going for the yawn. Okay, Kamala at this health isn't super valuable. They actually end up missing the play rough, which... I pretty, it's gonna be expect, play rough accuracy has got to be like 40% at this point, but they think that move never hits. Um, <laughs> but that's actually super nice for me, because now I get the yawn off, and this essentially forces them to make a decision on whether, you know, they stay in, they can knock out the koala, but then they fall asleep, or they can switch out. They decide to absolute bonk the living shit out of me and flatten the koala. How could you do that to just a little koala? It ends up taking care of me. Uh, however, then, you know, you get a little bit sleepy. So I'm fine with that because, you know, a sleeping hammer is a non-threatening hammer. So this allows me a nice little revenge switch. I have a couple different options and I decide to go into the crocodile. So uh, I know that I can threaten this thing with an easy earthquake. They haven't taken their guaranteed turn of sleep here. Um, and I'm just going to go for that. I figure maybe they just stay in. If they do switch, Earthquake does hit their team pretty decently, uh, but they do actually end up switching out. They're going to conserve the Sleeping Tink, and they decide to switch into the Shift Tree. So this thing comes in on an Earthquake nicely, 
Plus, I am choice scarfed into that, so we find ourselves in a little bit of an awkward situation here. Of course, it does take that relatively nicely, but there's one thing you can guarantee that Shifteries these days are going to do, and that is going to be Tailwind. While it is super powerful, it is pretty predictable at this point, and with its new Wind Rider ability, it really benefits from that Tailwind. So I'm going to expect them to go for that Tailwind, and I'm just going to switch directly into the old 1 HP Mamoswine. I come in, I'm not afraid, being at literally hanging on by a thread here, and I do actually end up going for that Tailwind. Now, the reason why we do not care about that is because I do have priority in the form of Ice Shard with the Mamoswine, and on the amount of chip damage we've gotten on the Shiftry, it looks like this is an easy kill. So, I come in here, safely able to go for that Ice Shard, it does knock out the Shiftry, but he was flying around on his kite with his boosted attack, and that thing was very scary, but we're able to take care of it, and Mamoswine is out here rolling. So, now they get a revenge switch, they decide to go into the Pyroar. So I'm thinking, the Mamoswine surprisingly has a lot of utility left, and I do want to conserve this thing. So, I'm actually just going to switch directly into the Lumineon. Listen, if there's any situation where Lumineon has a good time, it's against a Pyroar. I can come in here, I'm especially defensive, and I can take any attack from this thing all day. It actually ends up going for the Flame Charge here, uh, which is going to give it a nice little boost in speed. And now this thing is, you know, faster than my entire team, but... I'm going to go ahead and expect them to switch out here and try to get a U-turn for a nice little pivot. But they're actually going to end up staying in, and they do commit the Terra here. So, the Pyroar ends up being Dragon-type Terra. He puts a little dragon on his head. Honestly, Loki looking kind of badass. But I've made this fish about as bulky as possible. And uh, he ends up going for the Terra Blast here. Going to get that stab uh, Dragon Terra Blast. But, again, I take it all in the ears. I got young elephant fish ears over here. Just soaking up the damage, able to then go for a U-turn. Would have been sweet to click Ice Beam, expecting maybe Gudra to switch in, but that's fine. I can now grab myself a better matchup, and guess what? Mamoswine Swine is actually able to come back in, still chilling, hanging by a thread with his 1 HP. Um, and <laughs> the Tailwind goes away, doesn't really matter at this point, because I can just then go for that Priority Ice Shard in the Dragon Terra in this situation. Actually does help me out pretty nicely. I'm able to pick off... Uh, the Pyro here, and that gets rid of their Terra, and the fastest Mon, so I'm feeling good. Ice Shard is out here just demolishing bitches, and we're just having a good woolly time over here. So, now they get a free switch, and honestly, with the remaining Pokemon, Mamoswine looks super nice. I've been able to conserve this thing, and it's kind of paying off, because they are forced to go into the Sinistra, and at this point, they can't use any Terras. I can go for the Ice Skill Crash. Throw some ice cubes in the old hot tea, and that actually does take care of it. So, Mamoswine is going on a rampage the likes I've never seen before, and I'm, I'm here for it. Uh, so, now they can go into the Tinkaton. Uh, keep in mind, this thing actually hasn't burnt its like man mandatory turn of sleep at this point. So, it can come in, try to go for that fake out, but I can now just reveal all the coverage this Mamoswine's got um, and click that Earthquake. So, it does take its turn of sleep there. I just smash the shit out of the ground. And that's going to be a bad time to be a pink little fella. So that takes care of the Tink. And now their final Pokemon is going to be the Gudra. And this is why, noticing the fact that Mamoswine had a really good win condition and type advantage over their team, even at 1 HP, uh, if conserved correctly, we can actually make some great use of it. So I can just go for the Icicle Crash here against the old thickest thighs in the game um, and not hopefully not get a miss. I do actually end up landing the Icicle Crash. However, it does actually just barely live it. And... Finishes me off with a Dragon Tail. So, Mamoswine does go down. We've taken care of literally every team member except for the Gudra. Um, but, I'm honestly, I'm fine with that. Because, after a little bit of leftover recovery, I don't care how thick and gooey your thighs are. Our good buddy Luminion is going to come in here and actually do what has never been done before. And that is, you know, actually come in here and kill something. So, we can basically just avenge our fallen Mamoswine. And Ice Beam is going to land and be able to take care of the Gudra. So, that is the end of the match. I thought that was just a fun one, showing that Mamoswine can really, can really just, uh, just ruin your day if you're not prepared for the Wooly Boy. So, thank you guys again very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support on these videos. Definitely leave a comment if there's anything you want to see me kind of highlight in these videos. Let me know. And overall, I do really just like reading the comments, so keep them coming. Thank you guys very much. I will see you next time. Peace out.